Hey guys, you know what video just went up on YouTube? I don't know exactly, but it probably had something to do with ChatGPT. Either ChatGPT or kittens or kittens and ChatGPT. Because YouTube is absolutely loaded with videos about ChatGPT. And almost every single one of them are complete bullshit. So I'm not going to... This is not going to be another video where I tell you how my business made $60,541.22 per day using ChatGPT or how I fully automated my business and now all I do is sleep on the beach or how ChatGPT has uh, allowed me or enabled me to blow all of my competitors out of the water because none of that is true. Instead, I'm going to tell you no BS what ChatGPT cannot do for you and what it should be doing for you and how you should be using it, not only in your e-commerce business, but really in any, uh, any business at all. So in order to do that, we have to kind of set the stage regarding what ChatGPT really is and what it's intended to do. That's going to give us the context to understand how we can and should use it. So very, very briefly, I'll, I'll just say that ChatGPT was launched by OpenAI and it is a generative AI app, meaning it uses AI programming to draw from a bunch of stored data in order to create new original content. In other words, you ask it a question, it's been trained on a bunch of data, it responds with an answer in natural language. That's it. Very cool, but also somewhat limited in scope. It does not predict the future. It does not solve uh, problems or riddles that haven't been solved before. It's not going to come in and just fully automate your business. That's not what it was intended to do, and that's not what it does. That's not to say it's not absolutely um, generational that it's not a complete tipping point in AI. It is, but everything we're being told to use this for is absolutely wrong, and almost everyone is missing exactly how we should be using this technology in our businesses right now. Now, I've got to give you the limitations of this platform because that's going to give you a whole bunch of guardrails um, to, to tell you what not to use this for. Before I do, I have to tell you that this video is sponsored by absolutely no one. So please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. Give me a, give me a comment. I don't care what it is. Um, something to keep the lights on so I can give you more videos in the future. Okay, so those limitations that we need to understand that should limit us in terms of or guide us in terms of what we don't use chat GPT for are really come down to about four. Number one, the data is old. ChatGPT was trained on data that ended in about 2021. So if you have to use anything, um, if, or if your, your business relies on current, state-of-the-art, uh, up-to-date information, ChatGPT is not always going to give you a good answer. In fact, uh, you probably shouldn't trust it for cutting edge information. Number two, you don't necessarily, or you can't necessarily trust the answer that chat GPT gives you. Um, you. It gives wrong information and it gives it confidently. So if you don't really know your material, you don't know if it's going, to, if it's giving you correct information or not. And if you do know your material, you don't necessarily need to know what chat GPT can give you, except in some uh, specific context, which I'll explain later. Number three, chat GPT requires a ton of uh, data processing. Okay. It requires a whole lot more than say uh, a simple Google search. So while we can um, get some functionality out of it, I think the whole world is going to rush into ChatGPT and it's going to solve all of our problems and do all of our, um, our, our internet search. It's not going to. Number four, it doesn't even search the internet. All right, it was trained on data. 
um, old data, but it's you're not doing an internet search. As a matter of fact, you don't even know exactly what you're searching. ChatGPT does not do a good job of telling you what it's referencing in in order to answer a question. So when I go to Google and I do a Google search for um, five most innovative practices for Amazon PPT, PPC or something like that, I can skip over Wikipedia. I can skip over some of the blogs where I don't necessarily trust the author, and I can go to um, you know sources that I trust. I could go to for some searches. I could go to and search and read a study, but with ChatGPT, uh, we're getting more of a general answer, and we don't know exactly where it's coming from. So, kind of hard to rely on any of this if your business requires state-of-the-art, current, cutting-edge information. So. Pretty much what you shouldn't use this for is everything YouTube videos are telling you to use it for. I have seen videos and I've tried um, to use this thing for writing Amazon listings, for writing blog articles, for writing marketing emails and uh, YouTube uh, scripts. But you know what you get when... You, you use it for things like that, you get okay, all right? So uh, I'll give you an example. I used it to write a uh, an Amazon listing. I've actually used, attempted to write many just to test it out, but I wrote one and I, um, or I had it write one and what I typed, write me an Amazon listing for a new monk fruit sweetened chocolate. Make it for a product with 15 one gram bars of monk fruit sweetened milk chocolate. You can see it's thinking Here's what gave me. Introducing our new and delicious monk fruit sweetened milk chocolate. This 15 pack of one gram bars is the perfect way to indulge in a sweet treat while maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Made with premium ingredients, our chocolate is sweetened with monk fruit, a natural sweetener that is calorie free and has no uh, added sugars. Blah, blah, blah. Now you might say, what's wrong with that? Nothing. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing exceptional with it, all right? It's a C, C plus product. And as a, an Amazon agency owner, C and C plus does not pay the rent on Amazon. C, C plus work, average work is a fast track to page 400 for your key search terms, your, your, your primary keywords, all right? It's, chat GPT is just not going to change your life here. Same thing for writing YouTube scripts or blog articles or anything else. You're going to get okay. You're not going to get exceptional. So when when this stuff is the right, uh, these applications for chat GPT are right for you is when your business sucks. When you don't pump out good work and you don't need good work and you just need okay, chat GPT is probably okay for you. It's not okay for us, at least not for stuff like that. For a veteran in business or an established business, this is not going to get you the quality you need uh, in, in order to automate your business or in order to turn over your workload to chat GPT. It's just not. And, and I can say the same thing for almost everything I've seen in most of the YouTube videos that I watched, at least the ones that are coming up first in YouTube's algorithm. Now, if you if you think, well, Eric, you, you must not think chat GPT is, is any good. I think it is absolutely a tipping point in AI. I think chat GPT has given us a glimpse of the future. It's just not the thing that's going to automate your business right now. It's not the thing that's going to make your business uh, or, or skyrocket you to the next level right now. It is a 
picture of what is possible. It, it is telling us that when we get rid of the, the major challenges associated with ChatGPT, it's going to be something really, really amazing. But we do have four really big challenges that limit what ChatGPT can do. What ChatGPT can do for you um, is four very specific things. Now, all of these can kind of be lumped together in one way. All of those limitations that I mentioned about ChatGPT, those are going to be solved very, very quickly. That, uh, that issue with data processing, now that we have a really uh, a, a tool and a lot of tools really with a lot of good potential, that's going to get cleared up. Businesses are going to start innovating and hardware is going to catch up. Um, that uh, old information and incorrect information that we talked about, guess what? Chat GPT is being trained right now. You know who's training it? You. You and I. When we do those queries and we get in incorrect information and uh, we refine those, uh, those, those answers or we, we request that they be refined, um, that is training Chat GPT. It is getting better and better. So we're going to use Chat GPT in four ways so that we continue to be tied in and, and plugged in to OpenAI and uh, all of the different AI applications out there. And the moment we're able to use them, we're on the cutting edge we know what they can do, and we're first movers for the real things that AI is going to be able to bring us. So the first thing that we want to use chat GPT for is an idea generator. So while it's not going to really write your, your YouTube script, if you need an idea, it's an okay place to start. In fact, the reason I like starting here is because we're going to know as chat GPT gets better. And I'm telling you right now, that is going to happen quickly, All right? It, it can give us a little bit of an outline that we can use and we can decide if, you know, if we like that outline and we can take that outline to Microsoft Word and rewrite it. We can take it to Google and start doing additional research. And, um, you know, we can, we're, we're really using it to sort of pump out um, a framework at times. Number two, we can use chat GPT for hard skills like writing snippets. If you do that, or Excel macros, if you do that, or solving formatting problems in Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or whatever, we can ask chat GPT for things that are not really questionable. They're kind of hard, hard questions that beg hard answers. And it's much easier to go to chat GPT because it puts the answer right in front of you. If you've ever gone to Google to look for some code or an Excel macro, you know that you have to drill into a whole bunch of different uh, websites and articles. Uh, you're going to go through a bunch of the wrong ones that, that aren't giving you what, you what you thought they were or what you asked for. Chat GPT, if you ask the question the right way, it's going to give you the right answer and it's going to give it to you right in front of you. So hard uh, or questions that beg a hard, um, hard skill type answer. That's a great thing to take to chat GPT. Number three, use it for some really creative things. Uh, and I mean really creative things that don't require any hard data or innovation or anything that is completely current. Um, some examples would be stories or allegories or uh, greeting cards. Maybe, I don't know, if you have a greeting card business, this might actually change your business. Um, email openers, uh, you know, subject lines, things like that. Things that are just creative in nature. Uh, I'll give you an example of what I did. I typed a, um, I asked ChatGPT to type a story uh, or give me an allegory set in a squirrel community that teaches children not to steal. And it gave me a story. It wasn't great. I refined it and it gave me something better. So chat GPT is really good at being creative in a hurry. Um, it'll give you a story in seconds. It, it actually will type it in a lot of cases faster than you can read it. So things that are really, really creative, um, are, are, it's, it's, really neat to experiment with chat GPT. But number four, 
I'm going to say, look at the other AI applications built on OpenAI. Um, whether or not they were released by OpenAI or they use OpenAI, um, or they're powered by OpenAI, there are some really cool things out there. I can't go into detail, but I'm going to give you a couple of them. Lenza. Lenza is an app that can make a, an incredible image of you simply from your selfies. And it can do it in a number of themes like manga, anime, comic book, futuristic, whatever. Um, and it can, it basically it'll just take a bunch of your, your selfies uh, when you're checking yourself out in the bathroom with your shirt off or whatever, guys, um, or women in the dressing room, you know, checking yourself out or whatever. You load that into uh, Lenza and Lenza will give you a face shot in uh, all kinds of different styles, and it is damn good. It is incredible. Mid Journey, you can literally type in text of what you want it to create a uh, an image of, and it'll create a completely unique uh, creative image from just the text prompts that you gave it. So you could say something like, um, create a picture of a haunted house on top of a snowy mountain. And it will do that. Um, it can do some really cool things. You have to train it like chat GPT, you have to train it over and over, but it can do some really cool products. So if you use uh, illustrations for books or uh, any other type of copy, um, you know, blogs, whatever, you can get that from Mid Journey. Mid Journey is doing that. It's doing a great job right now. Browse.ai is another one. This is really cool. Uh, this can actually search your internet browser for all kinds of, uh, of hard data. Now, if that sounds boring, think leads and contact information. It is really cool. In fact, I am scrambling to get all of that that I can uh, before somebody shuts it down. So look at some of these other AI apps. We, we have entered the age of artificial intelligence. It is out there and it is real. Don't buy into the hype. Don't buy into the bullshit and the, you know, the, the, the clickbait videos but use these tools for what they were intended for, and they can do some really cool things for you. So again, um, you can use uh, ChatGPT or the four things that you could use ChatGPT and other AI apps for right now. One, idea generators. Two, um, hard skills like coding, Excel macros, PowerPoint formatting, whatever. Number three, um, creative applications like storytelling, um, even forms of marketing. And number four, um, really the, the, the wider universe of AI applications. All right, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, um, subscribe, leave me a comment, and we will see you in the next one.